This is Mrs. Goswish, your AP Chemistry teacher. This is the PowerPoint lecture notes for Chapter 4, the types of chemical reactions and solution stoichiometry. These PowerPoint notes are going to cover sections 1 and 2 of Chapter 4. First off, section 1 discusses the properties of water. Water is the common solvent. It is usually our most popular dissolving medium or solvent. And please remember, which I am going to reiterate repeatedly, solvent is the dissolver or the substance in the greater quantity. Greatest, greater. Some properties of waters, which you should remember from first year chemistry. It's bent or V-shaped. The OH bonds are covalent. That means that they are sharing electrons. You only got two options. Either it's ionic, loss or gain, or covalent, sharing electrons in the bond. Water is a very polar molecule due to the electronegativity of oxygen. And the electronegativity of the oxygen is much greater than the electronegativity of the hydrogens. So that shared pair of electrons is closer to the oxygen, giving it a negative pole. Hydration occurs when salts dissolve in water. Images of the water molecule, both the ball and stick and the filled in 3D. This is our typical ball and stick model that we are familiar with. In the ball and stick model, we have hydrogen and hydrogen. And then here is your oxygen atom. This symbol here indicates the charge felt at this end of the molecule, the charge felt at this end of the molecule, and the charge here felt at this end of the molecule. You will notice that it's a positive charge here, a positive charge here, and a negative charge there. We draw it this way Please remember that this single stick represents two electrons being shared between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And the problem is they're actually closer to the oxygen because of the oxygen's electronegativity. This right model is your quintessential 3D model of the water molecule but it pretty much shows the same thing, the hydrogen, the oxygen, and the hydrogen. If you look at it sideways, it looks like Mickey Mouse ears. Cations and anions of ionic compounds align themselves very specifically around the polar water molecule. This is an example of a salt, and please remember the term salt covers any ionic compound and let's pick uh, let's pick our usual sodium chloride so the little gray ones are the sodium and the big green ones are the chloride ions on the left this is an actual crystalline lattice structure of a sodium chloride molecule, which is not only a salt, but it is like the salt. It is table salt. And the sodium chloride solid structure consists of the cations and the anions interspersed because opposites attract. So notice, for example, this cation right here is, of course, surrounded by negatively charged anions. And what happens is you put the solid into liquid water, which all these guys represent liquid water, 
not only does it dissolve, but it also dissociates, and it dissociates in a particular manner. Notice that the cation gets surrounded by the negatively charged oxygens on the water, and the anion gets surrounded by the positively charged hydrogens the positively charged hydrogens on the water. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of salts. They orient themselves in a very particular manner. Electrolytes, strong versus weak versus non-electrolytes. An electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water will produce a solution that can conduct electricity. Okay, a couple of things to remember. Solute. It is either going to be the solid, when you're talking about a salt in water, or it is going to be the substance in the least amount, if you're talking liquid in liquid. Solvent. Will be one of two things. Either it will be the water, if you are talking about a salt dissolved in water, or it will be the greater amount. Substance in the greater amount. Think isopropyl alcohol, please. That is 70% isopropyl alcohol and 30% water. So in that example, the isopropyl alcohol exact is actually the solvent, and water is the solute. The solution is exactly what I have written. The solution is the sum of the two. It is the solute and the solvent. So keep those three terms very distinct in your head. Solution versus solute versus solvent. Electrolytes. Strong electrolytes. Strong electrolytes will completely dissociate into ions completely ionize in the case of an acid. Acids are covalent compounds that become ions in water. So a strong electrolyte will completely dissociate or ionize and conduct current, conduct electricity efficiently. Two examples, sodium chloride, which is a salt, and nitric acid, which is a strong acid. So sodium chloride will be a solid in water and nitric acid will be liquid nitric acid in water. And make sure you know all the naming. Those two examples not only dissolve but will dissociate and ionize completely 100% in water. Weak electrolytes dissociate only slightly or ionize in the case of acids and will conduct only a very small electric current, rather dull. Example for those, vinegar, which is nothing more than acetic acid. So it's a weak acid. and it is called acetic acid. And tap water. Tap water will ionize slightly and will conduct electricity. Non-electrolytes are those substances that do not dissociate into ions at all, will not conduct electricity at all. And two examples of that pure water and a sugar solution. Sugar C12 H22 O11. Sugar will dissolve but will not dissociate. So please remember everything basically dissolves but not everything dissociates.
this right here will not dissociate into ions because it is not an ionic compound nor is it an acid. So it will not dissociate and it will not conduct electricity. All right, strong electrolytes, soluble ionic compounds. Those are your solubility rules which you have to have memorized. That's why I gave them to you. Strong acids, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, and they've recently started adding chloric acid. That is included in your list. There are seven of them. Strong electrolytes will also include strong bases. The group 1A and 2A strong bases. Notice magnesium hydroxide is not included. Magnesium hydroxide will dissolve but only dissociates slightly. It's more of a sludge. Weak electrolytes any weak acid, if it is not on the list on strong, then it is a weak acid. If it is not on the list of strong bases, then it is a weak base. Non-electrolytes, molecular substances that are not acids or bases. Do you understand electrolytes? In this picture, identify the solute and the solvent. Is this an example of a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? So for example, notice this is a salt. This is an ionic compound. All ionic compounds are referred to as salts. This one happens to be sodium chloride. So before we add water, this is the solute alone. Then on the right, we've added water, so what we have here is a solution, which is the solute of the salt plus the solvent of the water. Notice that as the sodium chloride is placed in water, the sodium chloride is an ionic compound and will dissociate 100% in water to become the chloride ion and the sodiums in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the solute is the sodium chloride, the salt. The solvent is water. And since it dissociates 100%, this is going to be an example of a strong electrolyte. You will notice in this picture here, there is absolutely no compound sodium chloride. It is only the ions, the chloride and the sodium ions. Acids. The arena's definition of a strong acid will ionize completely to produce hydrogen ions in solution. For example, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. Remember, sulfuric acid is the only one that is diprotic. Weak acids ionize only slightly and acetic acid and formic acid are two examples of that. Uh, please remember that this is the arenas definition. And applies only to solution. Right. So it applies, arenas only applies to solutions which of course this chapter revolves around. So, Here's an example of hydrochloric acid on the left and acetic acid on the right. Notice please, 
And again, water being the solvent. If you look at this solution, and keep in mind they're not showing you the water molecules floating around or the fact that the water molecules are particularly oriented around each of the ions in a particular manner. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It becomes ions in water. The hydrogen plus ion and the chloride minus ion. And if you were to draw water molecules you would have the hydrogen ion of the water molecule surrounding the negative, and you would have the oxygen ion of the water molecule surrounding the positive. On the right here, notice you have, not only do you have the ions coming off, on some of the solution retains the compound as is. Bases. Strong bases react completely with water to give hydroxide ions in solution. Please remember, again, this is the Arenas definition because it is talking about bases in solution. That's why it's the Arenas definition. The Bronsted Lowry covered different states of matter. Arenas covered strictly liquid forms. Example, sodium hydroxide, which of course is a salt solution. Weak bases react only slightly with water to give hydroxide ions and ammonia is an example of that. Aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide and ammonia, again notice that you will not get any of the compound because it ionizes completely. So in this sample of sodium hydroxide there is no sodium hydroxide compound. There is only sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And again, the water molecules are not shown. They will orient themselves very particularly around the cation and the anion. Uh, on the right here, you've got ammonia in solution. And you have the actual compound and the ions that make up the compound.